Cation, Commissioner Henderson, Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Singleton. Hello, thank you. I'm not to the service of this great community, but Harvard, and I'm just a prayer of our need that you bless the decision once again. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and I'd like to move to the citizens' comments. Barbie, Madam Clark. Commissioner Adams. Present. Commissioner Harrison. Present. Commissioner Henderson. Here. Commissioner Henry. Present. Commissioner Eisen. Present. Commissioner Jones. Present. Mayor Colton Seats. Commissioner Singleton. Present. Mayor Muhammad. Present. Mayor Thank you. Open up the meeting for <coughs> citizens' comments or public remarks. For those who like to participate, please register with the city clerk, Thompson. She will call you accordingly. None, Your Honor. Hearing none. This brings us to the item review of medical marijuana facility class C grower application. I have a resolution in hand. And it reads as follows The City Commission has reviewed the application of Novo Michigan LLC for a medical marijuana facility permit to operate one medical marijuana class C, class C equals 1500 marijuana plants, grow facility within the city limits. Whereas quote unquote grower as defined by the city ordinance and by the Michigan Medical Marijuana Facilities Licensing Acts, Michigan Compiled Law 333.27101, means a licensee that is a commercial and or agricultural entity located within this state, city, parentheses, that cultivates, dries, trims, or cures, and packages medical, parentheses, marijuana for sale to a processor or provisioning center only. And whereas this application has been reviewed and vetted for completeness by the city's department heads, Department of Public Safety, excuse me, Public Service, both police and fire, building inspector, zoning administrator, city attorney, and city finance director. Pursuant to section four of Benton Harbor's ordinance for the establishment of medical marijuana facilities pursuant to Michigan's medical Marijuana Licensing Act, being Public Act 281 of 2016. Whereas this application having been referred to the City Planning Commission, where it was reviewed to ensure compliance with the city zoning ordinance and for approval of a special use permit to operate one medical marijuana class C growth facility located at 900 Al Rico Drive within the city of Benton Harbor where the Planning Commission conducted a properly noticed public hearing where the citizens were invited to ask questions, voice concerns, or voice their approval of such a facility. Whereas the Planning Commission discussed the application and based on the criteria as required by the City of Benton Harbor's own ordinance, the Planning Commission granted the special use permit for the applicant for 900 Alrico Drive 
Benton Harbor on blank of 2019. Can we get that date, please? <coughs> Conditioned upon having the required 32 parking spaces, the city commission's approval of the state of Michigan's final approval and granting of one state approved class C growers license for 900 El Rico Benton Harbor. Whereas pursuant to the state's medical marijuana facilities licensing act, certain portions of an application and the material provided by an applicant are to remain confidential and exempt from Michigan's Freedom of Information Act. Thus, the city commission may, if necessary, meet in a closed session to discuss confidential materials and or documents contained in an application to discuss and evaluate those confidential materials. Otherwise, the city commission shall evaluate the application and applicant pursuant to those categories as stated in sections four, five, and six of the city's medical marijuana facilities ordinance and the public portion of the city commission meeting. Whereas the categories within the city, city's medical marijuana facilities ordinance reviewed, by the city commission are as follows. The applicant's security plan, one. The applicant's business plan, two. The applicant's floor plan, three. The applicant's location of the proposed facility, four. The applicant's description of the chemicals to be used in the <laughs> facility, the applicant's staffing plans, the applicant's affidavits regarding their commercial license history, seven. The applicant's proposed signage text, eight. The applicant's description of grow methods, including grow mediums, treatments, and or additives, nine. The applicant's description of its production testing plan, 10. The applicant's statement that growing shall be performed within an enclosed, locked facility, 11. The applicant's certification letter from bank indicating sufficient liquid funds, 12. The applicant's facility sanitation plan to protect against any marijuana being ingested by any person or animal, include indicating how the waste will be disposed and stored of and how the marijuana will be disposed of and how it will be rendered unusable upon disposal. 13, the applicant's crisis response plans, 14. The applicant's premises liability and casualty insurance, 15. Proof of ownership or lease with acknowledgement and approval from landlord of facility usage, 16. Section 6B, in its applicant's deliberations, the city commission shall assess each application in each of the following categories. One, the applicant experience in operating other similarly permitted or licensed businesses. Two, the applicant's general business management experience. Three, the applicant's general business reputation. Four, the integrity, moral character, and reputation, personal and business probity, financial ability and experience and responsibility or means to operate or maintain a medical marijuana facility. Five, the financial ability of the applicant to purchase and maintain adequate liability and casualty insurance. Six, the sources and total amount of applicants capitalization to operate the proposed medical marijuana facility. Seven, whether the applicant or stakeholders have been indicted for, charged with, arrested for, or convicted of, pled guilty or no contest to a forfeited bail concerning or had expunged any relevant criminal offense under the laws of any jurisdiction, either felony or misdemeanor not including traffic violations, regardless of whether the offense has been expunged, pardoned, reversed, on appeal or otherwise, or the past convictions of the applicant or stakeholders involving any of the following 
but not limited to gambling, prostitution, weapons, tax evasion, fraudulent activity. Serious moral turpitude. Is there a felony or misdemeanor of such nature that it may impair the ability of the applicant or stakeholder to operate a licensed business in a safe? Is it is it a supplement? Yes, sir. We want to finish the resolution first. In competent manner. Ten has the applicant or stakeholders or any business entity in which they have held an ownership interest filed for bankruptcy within the past seven years. 11, has the applicant or stakeholder been served with a complaint or other notice filed with any public regard, payment of any tax required under federal, state, or local law that has been delinquent for one or more years? 12, whether the applicant or stakeholders has a history of not compliance with any regulatory requirements in this state or any other jurisdiction? 13, as it relates to operation of a provisioning center, the applicant's type of service and product that will be offered and the overall theme and atmosphere of the proposed provisioning center. If there is no need to go into closed session to discuss confidential information that persuading to Michigan's Medical Marijuana Facilities Licensing Act is exempt from disclosure through Michigan's Freedom of Information Act. The city commission should then vote if yes, wherefore the city of Benton Harbor Commission, after review of No Bowls Michigan LLC's application for one Class C medical marijuana grow permit and the above reference criteria as stated in Benton Harbor's medical marijuana facilities, ordinance hereby approves and grants to No Bowl of Michigan LLC one Class C medical marijuana grow permit for 900 El Rico Drive. Good Harbor, Michigan, subject to and conditioned upon providing sufficient proof of providing the necessary 32 parking spaces and final state approval for the same state class C grow license to be operated in 900 Alrico Drive, Good Harbor, Michigan. If no, wherefore the city of Good Harbor City Commission, after review of no vote of Michigan LLC's application for one class C medical marijuana grow permit. And the above reference criteria as stated in Bridge Harbor's Medical Marijuana Facilities Ordinance hereby denies Noble of Michigan LLC's application for one Class C Medical Marijuana Grow Permit for 900 El Rico Drive, Bridge Harbor, Michigan. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Motion is made by Commissioner Adams and it is supported by Commissioner Jones. Madam Clerk. For informational purposes, the applicant received a special use permit from the Planning Commission on June 4th, um, a provisional approval for site plans from the Planning Commission on August 20th, and the special use permit from the City Commission on July 15th, 2019. And if this uh, the will of the Commission, I would suggest that we allow the applicant to give a brief presentation before we discuss this. Please, next. please, Mayor. That's Already call for a vote. Okay, call for the vote. Um, so, yeah, so the uh, discussion out of the chair recognizes Commissioner Henderson. Yeah, I just have a couple questions about. Um, can they come to the table? Absolutely. This is yes, that's, thank you. Yeah. Okay. And maybe you can put this particular document. Everybody's supposed to sign that document or just this particular person. Because in the uh, other documents, I saw signatures that were similar. There were multiple pieces, but <clears throat> one person signed this particular document. I want to know if we're all three supposed to sign that. Uh, I think, uh, only saw the one uh, signature. But Mr. One, Henderson, unless I, I overlooked it. And I, I, I don't see the document, but I know that there was a resolution on behalf of the entity applicant to uh, for, to authorize one individual to sign on behalf of the applicant um let me see what can be on the pair it didn't have a this is uh this is the oath of application yeah. that i think is under the uh, first it's under section four 
the rest of them, they all signed. And I saw that one person was speaking, but they all signed all some of those other documents. And I just want to know what that particular one was. Right. That was, um, again, they provided uh, a resolution from the applicant LLC that authorized this individual to sign on behalf of the entity. So. I have a couple more, and I don't think I, I was I could find that when I was reading it because you have an extensive um, security system um, in place. As I was reading, will there be a um, security guard on premise? I don't think I saw that, but I saw the extensive security measures. But I don't think I saw a physical uh, place where a security guard would be there. Yes, we will be. Uh, I have Phil Stoller through the chair. Um, could you please state your affiliation? Position with the company, sir. Yes, I'm co founder and director of Novo Michigan LLC. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Lyons' uh, security company will be handling our security. So there will be a physical guard on what? Yes, there will. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Adams. But I was talking to Mr. Uh, there were, there will also be the seven foot. Uh, uh, Security fence, as well as uh, everything like the security. Yeah, as yeah. Far as, uh, I mean, it was extensive, but I, I, I didn't see physically what it was going to be. Uh, my other question is um, if you recruit on page 101, you were talking about recruitment. Because um, some positions you're recruiting for, and I think you're looking for people who are trained in certain areas. But my question is if you're not able to recruit for a particular position, Will you train people to actually do those positions? I saw that you'll be doing some OJT, but I know some positions you're recruiting for those positions. Yeah, would it be okay if I, if I yeah. brag a little bit and elaborate? Um, because it's, it's been a while since we came to that harbor. I had 14 months since I started started our journey here. Um, when I when we started, we had we had a, uh, the, the, the the RFQ that you have in place, which was is. Ms. Baca and Mr. Chen and Alan Bonset and myself. Um, just in in the last uh, couple of months, we've uh, Novo Inc., not Novo Michigan, which is a subsidiary, basically, I don't know, just our, our unit. But eventually, we hope that we'll we'll do a full merge. Um, we're happy to announce that uh, we have developed uh, Novo Inc. with uh, with a group called the Will Group um, out of Chicago. Um, which is the 64th largest black-owned company in the country, and uh, we are the minor um, stakeholder in that. Uh, but they found it; uh, they found us worthy. Um, I'm really proud of that to uh, partner up with us, and they're going to be handling our LED lighting company, and we're going to be uh, uh, running operations uh, and. They've always been a very social equity related company. Uh, that's what they that's how they built themselves. Um, and we're going to run our LEDs through there. And so Ben Harbor is kind of the, the jump start for everything. And uh, there will be not only will we be training, uh, the management will be heading out to Portland and to um, to Colorado to be to be trained initially and then there'll be room for advancement not only in, in Benton Harbor but throughout Michigan and throughout the country through through us and through the Will Group and through our through our affiliates. And my other question and I think that was my final one what is the average pay um, for the different positions that you I've I've steadfast insisted on a, on a living wage uh, which varies upon regions but it's uh, it's enough to you know support a family based upon uh, you know I don't I don't have I'm I'm not in the uh, the accounting practices but I've insisted upon living wage living wage. Thank you and and my questions were just because I you know I, I wanted to keep you know my uh, personal opinions uh, to just reading this information and making a judgment based on that so I haven't had a lot of interactions that some commissioners may have but i have not and that has been uh, on purpose so that we could have this interaction and i could read um the information that you placed in this book it was very well put together um so thank you thank you chair recognize the mayor pro tip seats thank you uh honorable mayor section 6b7 um 
where it's great about stakeholders in charge of the rest of the February 6th. We, we wanna, are you going to interrupt? So if it's, if any any oh, criminal yeah. charges or offenses would have to be discussed in closed session. Uh, should we not discuss this in closed session then honorable mayor because it did so state part of our application that pursuant to this application, one of the partners has been convicted of having uh, possession and commission. commission. We cannot if, it's, if that violates the order. state order. state state statute. Point of order. Final oh, mayor, with all due respect, uh, can we can we take this into closed session? Because then is that a motion? I make a motion because this needs to be talked about because it's part of the section that we have to vote on. It says the city commission shall assess each application in each of the following categories. A motion, a motion has been made to go into closed session to discuss a matter that is, is exempt from the uh, Open Meetings Act and the Freedom of Information Act. Is there a second? Support, Support by Commissioner Harrelson. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Adams? No. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Singleton? No. Commissioner Isom? No. Commissioner Henderson? No. Commissioner Harrelson? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Jones? No. Mayor Pro Tem Seats? Yes. Mayor Muhammad? Yes. Motion fails. Let's go the floor. Chair recognizes the mayor pro temp seats. Well, thank you for that. And next, my next question, have you gave any donations? Anybody? Well, this has something to do with it. This has something to do with it. Has any any donation been given to anybody who sit on this board? Any entity that they support or anything else? And then my next question comes after that. Uh, personally, my wife and I have donated to several um, entities that when people have um, either brought up to us um, a need in the community. Uh, we've donated to the uh, I Am the Greatest Art Foundation. Uh, I, I also am a member of the Downtown Development Authority, so um, I don't know. Uh, I'm a part of this community, so yes, I have donated to to a, a few charities as I've donated to charities throughout the region as I'm part of the area. Not charities, I ask specific question. Any entity that has anything to do with any stakeholder that has a vote in this matter? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Seats, with all due respect, I have given my answer. Chair recognizes Mayor Pro Tem Seats. Thank you, Please address the chair, sir. With the insurance of this entity, um, I, I duly note that there is nowhere where the city of Ben Arbor's name, the case will burn down. The building goes like any other business in the city of Ben Arbor commercial. The building burns down and the city gets to hold a certain percentage unless uh, until it is re-established or reconditioned. I noticed that we're nowhere on the insurance policy. On the insurance policy that we turned in with our application, the city is named on the insurance policy. Madam Clerk, do we have a copy of that? I have provided what was given to me as part of the application. <clears throat> is it in this packet here? The, uh, the original application that we turned in in uh, October 4th of 2018, it is in that packet. There was a packet. And we um, we are the the, uh, the policy is still in effect. Because I did ask the city attorney, I did not see where the city of Ben Harbor was named as a co insured um, on the life on the uh, insurance. I, I didn't see that in this particular packet. Uh, and he, Mr. Mayor, if I may, Phil Calamares, counsel for Noble, uh, these the certificates of insurance that were current through Conifer Insurance were provided by city attorney by me, roughly, I think more than 
roughly 10 days ago, I think, the most current version. Who did you uh, give those to? The attorney? city attorney. To the city attorney? And you? Yes, and I, I did receive those two from Attorney Calamaros, and I did, uh, uh, and that is correct that the city was uh, listed as a co insured, and I forwarded those uh, documents that came to me via email. Uh, to that, the that is confirmed. Yes, and that's why I approved uh, for completeness the application. Thank you. Yes. It's on page 27 uh, for those who need clarity. Last quick, last statement that I'll make. In speaking to the state today, uh, the licensing commission concerning this matter, what these individuals are skirting was a problem with the state. So I'll leave it at the, I'll leave it at the desk. Of these individuals who are voting, but for the state, it was a problem. And I had another commissioner, Juanita Henry, who was on the phone, and she heard the same thing. Thank you, Honorable Mayor. If I may make this one statement, that on uh, April 25th of uh, 2019, uh, NOVO was among the uh, applicants that were passed by the board that was disbanded. We were the last, one of the last groups on that on that day to be passed without prejudice, unanimously, without any questions. Chair recognizes the mayor pro tem seats. Excuse me. If I have the floor. I've said last question. That's on your business. I, I, I've been waiting. Right here with you. Thank you, sir. And I, I would like to be thank you, sir. Thank you, Chair. I do appreciate that. I don't mean, I don't withdraw my statement that I made. The state of Michigan had an issue with the backgrounds of some individuals. We won't go through it, but if I have to involve the state, then we have to do it. We're going so back into the same direction that we went to them before, where people are getting little promises and a little bit of whatever, and now we vote. I want to know, really, why are we fast-tracking this one and not every other one? Thank you, Mayor. I will say, I, I'm, I'm since I know that it will be uh, questions, I'm trying to give each individual commissioner the time to ask okay. the number of questions. That way, we're not bouncing around back and forth. So I'm just allotting the time for each commissioner. Chair recognizes Commissioner Adams. Thank you. And um, I want to thank you, Mr. Stover. You have been in here on so many occasions of, of meetings that had nothing to do with this, trying to learn about our city and how it operates. And when you're relocating to a place, that makes sense. I did the same thing when I came back home. I came down here to see what was going on and, and, and how things function, and I find myself over here now. I also want to thank you because I want to clear up something that one of my colleagues is getting at. I work my ass off for everything I have and everything I own. Nobody gives Mary Alice a damn thing, okay? Mr. Stoller took it upon himself to call me one day when he heard in one of our meetings something about hungry children or something. This young man went to the store and said, Commissioner Adams, I have some things that me and my wife would really like to donate. And I'm like, well, I can't do anything about that. But I thought of somebody that could. And she happens to be present, Miss Wynn Swanigan of the Sharp Foundation, and I went to the store and bought socks to go along with the food that he purchased for some children that we took to the school. And I want to thank you again for that and make sure you thank your lovely wife. Not very many people come into our community and feel that type of pain to do something as a stranger. Now, just because I'm excited about this, because this right here, this medical marijuana was something that my baby needed. And we had a discussion earlier about lead in our lines. 
And for anybody that was smart enough to do their research, they would know that lead causes epilepsy. Pray for all your children, grown-ups too, because it could hit any of us at any given time. I'm excited because we've been praying, paying for properties that's just sitting dormant, just like the golf course and everything else, just sitting dormant. It was an opportunity, though, for some job growth because there's some factories about to shut down. So they turned into cooks, caddies, what have you. It created some jobs. It created some jobs. It put Benton Harbor on a map. And some of them may not like the map that this right here is bringing, but that's a personal problem that they'll just have to deal with, just like Main Street flood. Another problem. But you brought jobs. You're bringing jobs. And I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you because you came forward in the very beginning. And a lot of everything that I went over in this right here was at a whole lot of our committee meetings to where I don't have to ask you some of the questions that I've heard you ask right here. Had anybody else been paying attention? Yeah. But we're privy to ask questions. Everything seemed in order, which was why... I like the fact that when you came, you came with attorneys willing to work with our attorneys and then city manager to try to make sure that this thing was on point and exactly in the order in which the law allows. I'm no attorney. I was glad that when our new governor came on board, Governor Windermere put forth something that made it even easier for even some of those that have convictions. I just want to thank you. And we can call for the question. For real. Chair recognizes Commissioner Singleton. Call for the question. Question. Yeah. Chair recognizes. Can we get the question? I have to give everybody an opportunity to participate in the debate. Commissioner Henry. Thank you, Mayor. I did have a concern. Now everybody knows that I'm always looking you for. Speaking to the microphone, please. I'm always looking for one thing in particular, and that's jobs for our people. And uh, when I look at the jobs that this growing facility is looking for is qualified people. I understand that. You need qualified people to start your grow business. And a one year to five years of commercial growing experience is not going to make it because Michigan just came on board. There is no one that legally can say they've grown marijuana so that is a is a problem for me not for you because i already know that i would not ask my doctor to do my plumbing so i, I know you have to have qualified people to start your business off um but i would like to know is those management jobs and those are, 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 are they going to be open up in the later time to be Harbor residents that grow with the company? I would like to see that. I, I know that you can't hire a person that don't have the skills you need. And I see that you have some other entities that you're going to start with uh, to spring off of marijuana manufacturing and so I can see that there's going to be jobs that's going to spring off of your growing. Uh, but initially, I don't see that. Can you have some comment? There are a lot of skilled caregivers in Michigan that I believe would qualify as uh, semi-commercial. Uh, I've, met, I've met people that claim to be. Uh, caregivers of that power, um, they, they would they would qualify as, as commercial growers in my mind. 
They would qualify with two years experience, five years experience, from one to five years experience. You would qualify a care provider, someone that has clients and they grow their own. They, would, they wouldn't be qualified to be the head grower, but they'd be qualified to be trained in to be a head grower. Gotcha. I didn't see that in this document. I would like to make sure that it's in the document because somewhere along the line, we will be looking to make sure that some of our residents grow in your establishment. Uh, I've made a, a commitment to uh, work with Ms. Swanigan to give preferential uh, uh, looks to uh, uh, resumes that come from within the city limits of that harbor for these particular facilities. But, Commissioner, if I can just uh, make a comment to you. Could you state your name? And Again, it's Phil Calamaris. I'm attorney for Novo. Uh, yeah, when they were looking for places to go, Mr. Stoller's brother came to me and I said, I know of a place. And, and I live across the river. I live on the north side of the river up in Hager. And I said, I know of the exact piece of property that you could take off the tax rolls that's ideally suited for this purpose and a place where we need jobs because this is where I live, this is where I do taxes. <clears throat> So it's my expectation that my client will, in fact, bring jobs that are basic and then promote from within because of the capability of doing that. As you said, anybody here that claims to have a great deal of experience in growing marijuana probably wasn't doing that on the right side of the law unless they were in some other state. So what we can do here is bring opportunities that don't require advanced degrees but require experience. So at the primary level, when you're bringing a job in, it's a job that can be trained and then can be advanced. Like Mr. Stoller said, you may not have a person that can come in as a head grower, but it's the very experience that puts them on the plants that makes them qualified to move up the rank. Those are simple things that we have to do, and I agree with you. It's important to, it's important to think about. When I thought about that property, because I drive Pawpaw every day and I go by this beautiful, this beautiful property that was sitting with nobody doing anything tax-wise that had that that went into the, the county. That was a hot property in terms of its pollution. It wasn't going to be a property you're going to put houses on or somebody was going to drop a new operation on. But here's an operation that was ideally suited for that property. That again, skip say, excuse me, I don't mean to stop you, but I understand about the property, but that's not my issue. I, I understand. The property is not my issue because you guys have all worked that out with the county already. I read in here where you actually leased it. So I understand. I'm only interested in jobs and to make sure that what you say, you do. And, uh, and I know talk is cheap, but in writing, Something that we can hold you to in five, in two years, four years, we can say, well, what did you do to bring some people from Benton Harbor up to? Yes, ma'am. But let me let me make the point that a factory that's not located in Benton Harbor will bring no jobs to Benton. <laughs> and so, by making sure that this property is the one where this property gets the factory, that's where those jobs are going to come to, and that's where the tax rolls are going to be. I'm totally. I'm totally supportive because I spent my whole life in this area. So I know when there were jobs and when there weren't jobs. And I totally agree with you. And this is also a business that has arms that will reach out complementary, as you said, additional businesses that feed off of this business. And those businesses will also have jobs. Just like a tree. It's not just the, it's not just the plant, but it's also the branch. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, sure. question. The... Uh, Really wish we had some order. So you are currently leasing this property, correct? Novo Inc., the parent company, purchased the property. Novo Michigan LLC is leasing the property from Novo Inc. So Novo Inc. purchased the property from the county. From the county, yes, sir. 
and, and is registered with the Barron County Register of Deeds as the owner. Yes, sir. And you are leasing. Yes, we are. Okay. Uh, the attorney um, wrapped. So the final <laughs> approval uh, would lie with the state of Michigan. Is that correct? Well, the city would, if, if the city approved uh, the application, then the yeah the state would then have to then grant uh, the applicant you know, the application as well. So this whatever the city approved today would be contingent upon the state's final approval for the license. And the state's act and the city's ordinance are pretty close uh, and similarly situated, so that there are any problems that uh, the commission had that weren't addressed with the city, the state certainly would, would address it. So the state's acting as the catch-all in this uh, situation. Um, but yes, again, the state is the final. So ultimately, the state, if there were issues or problems with the applicant, the state has the authority to deny. Is that correct? That's correct. They, they can't even answer the question though without approval from the from the city of Ben Harbor though. But so it would have to the, the licensing would have to come forth from our, us, but if they saw a problem, then they could yes overturn our well if, if they don't necessarily overturn the city's decision, they just deny the application that was provided to this uh, provided to the state. And in that case they wouldn't they would not be qualified they would not have a license and they could not operate within the city or, or anywhere in the state under that application. Thank you. I will. Uh, uh, Jim, pardon me. I'm sorry, you uh, interrupted me. I had another question. Follow um, me. Thank you. Um, I still didn't, I didn't get your confirmation that you're going to put it in writing of what you're going to do about the employment, but I, I definitely would like to see it uh, that Bittenheimer residents are going to get an opportunity to grow into your into your business. I would like to see that in in writing in your proposal. Um, and I'm sorry. I wrote it down somewhere. And you interrupted me and I went somewhere else. Oh, I did hear, I was in on the conversation that uh, we called the state. We called, we got the state on the phone a good half an hour talking to people until we finally got someone to talk to us about this issue. And it was in here, in the, in the plan, that's how we knew about it. And the and the question was about the criminal charges, and they did state that it was a problem. Do you have a name and contact in what department? Uh, Mayor Pro Tim had me on the phone, and I was just listening. I put it all on you and, and stayed on the phone and listened to the conversation. Right. So I just, he has it. I have, we went through 10, 10 different phone calls and talking to people. So I'm just saying what I know about uh, the conversation and what they said. Well, our ordinance, uh, and I know you've vetted it and read it carefully, uh, if the felony or expungement or um, misdemeanor um, <coughs> Or even contact with police if it is if it exceeds 10 years then the potential the applicant must disclose what it was however that would not disqualify an applicant so if i had a, a, a marijuana charge from 20 years ago when I was in college. And I hope the Palladium gets this right because I have not. <laughs> uh, 
uh, that charge would not prevent me from being considered for uh, a license if my name were on a application, given that the charge was 22 years ago, but I would have to disclose it. So I'm just putting that, saying that to say just for the record, uh, that's our ordinance. Right. I think it's seven years. It's 10 years. Oh, it's 10, it's 10 years. years. Okay. Well, he disclosed it. It was, he, he did what he was supposed to do. So I just want to be, but I, I just want to ask us to be very careful in terms of mm -hmm. abiding by, you know, because this is public, it is, you know, so we just, you know, but we've already at the chair recognizes uh, with the city manager have anything to say. No comments, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Thank you. City Attorney has said it all. Thank you. Just uh, a question. Just a question. Chair recognizes Mayor Pro Tem seats. Question uh, due to through the chair who recognizes this question. Um, does the special use permit cover everything that this Entity is asking to do a special permit that they garner and what scoring process or what scoring card or per ordinance that we utilize. Is there a scoring process that brings them before everybody else? And um, <clears throat> just want to know that does their special use permit cover everything that is getting ready to happen and what scoring? card or process that we use pursuant to our ordinance for this matter. Thank you, Honorable Claire. Thank you. Uh, they were unanimously approved uh, by the Planning Commission uh, for a special use permit. Um, and they satisfied all of the necessary zoning, which is located in the resolution um, zoning uh, which is what the city planning commission looks at the zoning and they uh, satisfy all the requirements there uh, the city attorney like, would like to add any uh, to that well the mayor is correct the planning commission is the arm of the city that deals specifically with land use and the zoning ordinance they are the uh the city's experts in the zoning ordinance and, and as part of the special use permit, the uh, Noble Inc. of Michigan provided the application uh, for a special land use permit and they were held their public hearings, uh, answered the questions from the, uh, from the planning commission and they satisfy the planning commission as it relates to the specific uh, <coughs> land use the class c grower uh, for that particular district in which the property 900 el rico is located um i i'm not sure if i was there for that i i i know that commissioner henry is also part of the planning commission don't know if she i, I just don't remember who was there and who wasn't but right. I, I was a part of somebody didn't vote because i know i wanted to be on this side of it but also uh from my understanding Although there are at least seven Class C grower licenses available uh, from the city, there yeah. are there are four total Class C. There are three Class B and three Class A, I believe, uh, app, uh, permits available from the city. Yep. So, from for, so in terms of having everything in place and prepared to present to state and local government. I think that NOVO has positioned themselves uh, to satisfy all requirements. I don't know that other, some of the other applicants have all of that satisfied. But, I, but this is before us today. 
Is that is that an all-inclusive special permit? That's what I'm trying to get at, Honorable Mayor, because of what actions will take place. As a Class C grower, we granted a special use permit for that. But all other things outside of that have to come back for a special use permit. That's the question I'm asking. The, the special use permit that was granted was just for a Class C grower. But all other arms or legs that's going to grow has to come back through the special, through the, the proper channels. Yep, so every app, uh, Mayor Pro Tem seats, uh, every application, uh, if an applicant uh, provides, sends in four applications for two Class C growers or three provisioning centers, every application has to go in front of the Planning Commission for its own separate uh, special use permit. So if an applicant has three Class C grower applications, it needs three class, it needs three special use permits, uh, one for each of those facilities. So, so my question, I'm married to the, do they understand this group that the only thing we're approving is what the special use permit says today? Yes, Mayor. The pending application before uh, the second Class C grow, SUP's already been filed, pending for process on that repo. So that that in order to what I think what I think you're getting has this is one step. This is the first step to complete the operation for 900. 900 hopefully we'll have two grows for which again there's another permit request in for the second grow and then for processing as it applies to nine separate applications. Those are separate applications. Those have already been filed and those are working their way through the system. So my question to the chair is, we don't start doing anything until we get the proper permits. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, once this permit is issued, then we go back to the state final approval. Then there is a period of time from the time that preliminary approval, which is already given until construction is completed as it applies to to the growth to this permit so once all the paperwork is done on this growth permit we've got construction a great deal of work yet to do before you're operational and then from there again you have these other complementary elements that will come forward similarly with with provisioning as well which would be a different location do the chair with the, the reconstruction the demolition or anything Will Ben Harbor residents be utilized? I think Commissioner Henry addressed that, but if you should address growing, I mean demolition. Construction, uh, do you plan on working with local? Uh, I mean, I could try to really. Well, do you plan to use local contractors as it relates to the construction? Uh, and at every opportunity, uh, employ big harbor residents. Yes, everyone has been, uh, we've been placed open bids uh, out. Uh, Patrick Fiore, who is our, uh, our facilities uh, director, has been conducting interviews. Uh, we do have uh, some local firms working with us. Uh, we're also working with a company out of Grand Rapids currently, uh, to who is who is kind of heading up all of our uh, different operations that we have going on around the state right now. We have several construction projects going on. This weekend to Benton Harbor, Benton Harbor was to be our first. Um, but in that time, I've, I've uh, applied and achieved many other licenses around the state. Um, so we've kind of moved around. Uh, but um, yes, we are going to. Uh, Benton Harbor residents at every uh, opportunity. Thank you. Chair recognizes Commissioner Adams. Call for a question. Can we please get the question? I have some more things that I'd like to say to Commissioner Adams. Can we please get the question? The chair recognizes Commissioner Henry. Thank you, uh, Chair. Um, in, in your package, you talk of you going to 
help out some entities in the city that are, are, are in the business of helping our residents. And one of them was the soup kitchen. And I was trying to find the document to see how what else would, uh, but that stuck out in my head that there were some things that you wanted to do. Well, that was, yes, the soup kitchen, but that was before we had really got a foothold in Benton Harbor. Um, I, uh, I'm i inclined to work with, um, in addition to the soup kitchen, some of the other charities that I've gotten, gotten to know around here, such as uh, the Sharp Foundation, and um, uh, personally, um, uh, and this is this is just my opinion. I think uh, uh, developmental literacy is uh, is something that I really want to deal with in uh, in Benton Harbor, um, in particular. Um, so uh, there's a couple of charity charitable organizations that uh, that I have been working with in Benton Harbor and uh, and the library also particularly. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Carry none, uh, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Eisenberg? Yes. Commissioner Henderson? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Mayor Pro Tennessee? No. Commissioner Singleton? Yes. Commissioner Harrelson? No. Commissioner Adams? Yes. Commissioner Henry? No. Mayor Mohammed. Yes. Motion here. That brings us to commission comments, staff comments, chair recognizes Deputy Clark, public safety. Uh, no comment from public safety. Commission. Chair recognizes our city attorney, uh, attorney Rack. Uh, yes, just quickly, uh, I'm going to steal the man, city manager's uh, thunder again. We've been uh, uh, reviewing and meeting with uh, medical marijuana applicants for provisioning centers, processors, uh, and grow facilities. And I'm hopeful that, unfortunately, the planning commission will have, or the city commission will have a lot of reading to do before the December. Uh, 16th uh, meeting because we plan to have quite a few applications uh, ready to go in the next month, month and a half. Thank you. Chair recognize the city clerk. No report, Your Honor. Chair recognize the city manager. No report. Chair recognizes Commissioner Harrells. No report. Chair recognizes Commissioner Henry. No comment. Chair recognizes Commissioner Jones. Thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Uh, I know we know the gentleman. I used to see him at a lot of these meetings here, uh, especially everything dealing with the community. So he is quite involved, but I did not know he was a part of this group here at all. But he always greeted me, treated everyone around me with uh, respect and due care. My thing is here, right? Must disrespect and fast talking. This was never really fast tracked. It's actually been in limbo for quite a while. What I found to be fast tracked and continue to be fast tracked is 200 par par. I'm wondering if somebody was promised something with that. They never pushed for anything like that before, but they awfully pushed hard for me to be in question. Here's the thing, like I stated in the meetings previous, everyone should have been doing their homework, period. Understand what's going on in the state as far as dealing with this initiative, mm -hmm. uh, as coming across in the state, as it's being done in other municipalities. A lot of people have been claiming they're in touch with other municipalities and found out they're not to even know how to deal with such an initiative that happened here in our community, right? Also, all these questions, a few of them which is, was deemed, I understood. Uh, some of them going along with, let's say, the dialysis center, right? About 
security measures, security systems, usually it calls for cameras, a man guard, unmanned guard, and sometimes animals. Some of this stuff could have been asked a long time ago. But also, let's not forget, those that brought that initiative to the table for us to be voting on should have followed this all the way through, so there shouldn't be no hard questions in the first place. I'm surprised they didn't ask you guys, how you plan to grow? Do you have an extractor in case you do get approved? The process, what type of soils are you using? Synthetic or real? How are you gonna turn the soil, right? A lot of these different questions that was asked was never brought up to anybody else before and never been held accountable because they was so. And I understand they were scared that you can't hold nobody to anything. So you gotta understand, you know, it's a trial run for someone, right? But I'm surprised. They didn't ask you what you're gonna use with the unused product once it's been harvested and processed, you know? I can't be recycled. Right? Yeah, I don't know. But why didn't you ask? See? <laughs> That's the whole question. A lot of the stuff, if y'all followed the process in the first place or initiated the process in the first place, it's going to be here now. So here, here's it is in a nutshell. Appreciate you. Thanks for coming out. Thank you for staying incognito because I probably have been linked with you just because we've been landing at the same meetings and same community events, it would have been tied in. But again, let this be a learning process for all of us. Be abreast on what you're talking about and what you're questioning about. None of this hearsay stuff that's gonna keep us in the back of the back. Law is changing every day. And since everybody calling up to the state, you should have been finding out a lot more. <laughs> Instead of saying, wait, you just see, do you know you're growing? You're growing, you'll see growing, right? <laughs> Need to follow everything out. We are leaders. We're supposed to be ahead of the curve. We're supposed to be such the gym here in the Midwest. Let's be that. I gave y'all a couple of drops. Y'all could have been in touch with Flint. Since Flint is supposed to be our so called distant sister. <laughs> y'all sit us through the conference. Y'all still not listen to the information. Read this. Read this again. Because since we have more applicants, we're going to go through the same process. But I guarantee you, they're not going to have the same answers for you. That's it. Chair recognizes Commissioner Henderson. Ooh. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Um, I'd just like to thank all the residents for coming out. It's been a long uh, evening. And um, like I stated before, uh, many commissioners had conversations prior to about this, and so I've had an opportunity to read uh, very thoroughly through this um, um, booklet that was uh, very well put together. Um, uh, good luck. Thank you. Chair recognizes Commissioner Singleton. Hey, young man. You guys, I uh, guess, went through the gamut first, you know, and uh, been approved for first step. I'm just glad to see uh, some progress you know, being made uh, in the uh, city of Ben when it comes related to the uh, medical marijuana. This has been a uh, ongoing and, and process, uh, learning process. Uh, you know, it's actually it's new to the state. I'm sure the state probably going through uh, similar things. To, uh, Colorado and some other places had it. Long head start, I'm sure they probably went through a lot of things in their, in their beginning. Uh, I just uh, want to make sure that uh, we come, we be fair, that when the next one come through, that uh, we uh, definitely make sure that they get through, put through the same process. Uh, and if they deem to have everything in order, then We'll make the decision on that. So, uh, appreciate uh, your hard work, your, your company's hard work. Uh, and I'm sure that there probably was some times that you wondered if it was uh, you know, really worth it, you know, but you evidently you saw some hope and you stuck it out. So, uh, 
I'm just looking forward to see uh, things happen in the community. And uh, if you 90% uh, effective of what you, you know, have shown so far, then that will be, be a big boom for our city anyway. So uh, I'm just going to ask my fellow Commissioner Hale would say trust the process. And uh, as far as holding you know, this company uh, responsible for or feet to the fire to uh, making sure that we uh, look out for our local residents, we also need to do that you know, for ourselves too when we you know, have opportunity to uh, send out our fees and actually uh, put forward who we got our. Uh, Income tax uh, you know, thing for the roads and stuff. So when we, you know, send them out for bid, we need to make sure that those companies uh, that we hold everybody accountable for, you know, looking out uh, when it's possible to uh, hire our uh, local residents. So just looking forward to uh, seeing the progress. Thank you, Chair Recognize Commissioner Ice. Thank you, Honorable Mayor. Thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight and staying with us in this uh, special meeting. Uh, you know, I feel that the applicant had met all the requirements. You know, it was a thorough application, and I felt that it was uh, very well uh, made. You know, went through all the uh, different departments. You know, you, I knew. People will come to this door and bring something to Ben Hart. And this is just one of the things that I've seen that expect great things. You can walk through that door and bring something for the people of Ben Harbor. Jobs, you know, anything. A lot of things will spur off from this. You know, people can afford to pay their bills, water bills, and jobs. You have a place to go, work 40 hours. You know, it's a life changing thing. And this is what it's all about. Change is hard sometimes. Especially uncharted territory. This is hard, you know, but change is here. You know, take one step at a time and it's going to work. You put in the work, you get results. So thank you again. So I can say, let's go, no vote. <laughs> the chair recognizes Commissioner Adams. Thank you, President, for taking time out of the schedule to come out um, this evening. Cold as it is. Oof. After researching, I think it must have been about nine, ten years ago, and I ran across Texas, and they had this, uh, I was on their site, and it was like Jumpstart Texas, and it was the infrastructure and the, how they mapped things and it was right there on his site with uh, attracting businesses and infrastructure being fixed and stuff. Something went wrong with theirs, but it was about just basically building or rebuilding a community. And for that, you have to have jobs, especially if some are leaving and things are closing down. Growth has to happen somewhere along the way. I want to thank you for choosing Benton Harbor for whatever reason. Um, because it's going to happen as we all pass through here. Each generation is going to do their thing, their way, uh, whatever makes things work. Um, as hard as I tried, for me, it's all about the medical marijuana, the cannabis. And it just dawned on me, my baby didn't even want to come back to Ben Harbor. But there's some other children in Benton Harbor that are epileptic. That cannabis can probably help. You don't know what it's like to watch a child in a, in a, in a uh, state of seizuring, biting on their tongue, just, just, just body so tense, and the different type of seizures that a person has. Some of them walk, just walk off. Not knowing anything, brain just shuts down. Some of heart stops in their sleep. 
there's some mothers, some fathers, some families. They may not be here all across this country, right here in Ben Harbor, that needs that relief. Thank you. Thank you. And Chair. Good luck. Thank you, Commissioner Adams. The Chair recognizes Mayor Pro Tem seats. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, for this opportunity to speak. Uh, I think it was Frederick Douglass who said, where justice is denied, where poverty is enforced, where ignorance prevails, where any one class is made to feel that society is organized, conspiracy to oppress, rob, grade them, neither persons, nor property will be safe. Um, I, I don't, again, I say for the record, I vote, uh, I want to vote, um, and does uh, somebody suggest that 200 Paul Paul reason why so if somebody will give you double the value of it you just have a clap for maybe you know you know we just have a clap for somebody else but we can't have you clap for your own therein lies a problem i want to say to all the veterans who are disabled veterans veterans who just happen to be here thank you for your service a uh, CBD oil has been proven to do all this other stuff that people are talking about. It's a THC that makes you high. It's not the CBD oil is what counteracts a lot of this stuff. You can give it to dogs, you can give it to, to goldfish, you can give it to whatever you want to give it to CBD. They sell it at Apple Valley everywhere. And it counteracts a lot of these symptoms we're talking about. So it's a grave danger for us to, to salute and do all this stuff with false information and to suggest that people don't research and study. If you can't build for yourself, how can you build for somebody else? And this is proven commodity. Um, I, my first title didn't come from here. Um, I served the United States Marine Corps before I even came here and did a whole lot of things beyond that. So reading is not one of my problems with comprehension. Um, if you want to call whoever you call, and I do uh, concur with those constituents, that I hopefully in 2020, we do have 2020 vision. I want to thank uh, even our city attorney for working hard and finally having an attorney who says something. I know you've been there all day today and I've seen people coming in and out of the offices and hopefully that these same group of individuals, when people come and stand before us today or next week or uh, December, we do the same thing. You know, I don't, I don't ask nobody for a check when I leave here. I don't ask anybody for a donation. I don't ask anybody for any kind of money. I serve, this is a voluntary role where nobody's here on this commission is making a fistful of money and running around with the bank account. But it's funny when, you know, you gotta ask people for any kind of, I don't, I believe you should have to do that and use this position for that. I just wanna thank Mr. Duncan for his hard work and determination for coming every week, every meeting. He is one of our mainstays and I do appreciate him on time publicly that I have nothing against Mr. Duncan. He works hard for what he believes and he believes in what he believes. And I like people to stand for something, you know, because if you don't stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything. So just keep your eyes open. You know, 2020 is going to be a whole different kind of year. We're going to have a whole lot of people. And I'm going to tell you this, on my closing, and that young lady came close. That commissioner at large election, she came real close. They shot one at you first. Can't wait to see what happens now. We're starting to build and get this downtown development going. They shot a, they shot a quick one at us. She came real close. It wasn't like no, wasn't no blowout there. You know, so hey, keep on winking and jinking because there's some people watching and there's some people, every financial transaction is trapped in the United States of America. You can believe that or not. And there's people who have come here who have said and made statements and will put it in writing that they've been requested and asked for some money. So hey, if that's the way we want to roll, we can put paper on it and then we'll do it like that. Because I'm not I'm not here to point fingers. Neither do I care what you obtain. But let's not play on people's ignorance and then just suggest that you read you read a 300 page document. No, I ain't read that thing. Stop playing. I'd like to uh, thank the residents for coming out. I'd like to uh, commend Commissioner Adams for uh, being a drum major in this particular initiative uh, as a legislative chair uh, and someone who promoted and supported
reported the new ordinance and higher government certain bills uh, have names that they're authored by that person. Uh, but I would like to say to you on this day that you and your hard work uh, does not go unnoticed uh, as it relates to uh, the achievement that we have uh, gotten today. Uh, as far as with Novo, I know that it's been a uh, strenuous process but there is something that is called time served. Uh, so I think that the time that uh, you have invested, I think that is going to uh, pay off uh, because the first investment is time. Uh, and then the next investment is dollars, which you have expended money. Uh, but the, the real job and the construction uh, is yet to come. So thank you. Uh, and I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. Report. 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 Commissioner Singleton? Yes. Commissioner Hamilton? Yes. Commissioner Adams? Yes. Mayor Pro Yes. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Harrelson? Yes. Commissioner John? Yes. Commissioner Eichel? Yes. Mayor Pro Yes. Yes. Thank you all for serving the community.